Today we're going to take a look at the SNES Classic. The SNES Classic, of course, is the follow-up to the wildly popular NES Classic. The NES Classic was announced and released last year, and it was extremely popular and it sold off the shelves and then was promptly discontinued, leaving a lot of fans wondering what happened. Now, Nintendo later explained that they didn't really expect the huge outpouring of support for the NES Classic. When they announced that later on they were going to be releasing the SNES Classic, people got excited, but they were notably cautious, and how couldn't they be? But Nintendo's reassured us that the SNES Classic is going to stick around long enough to satisfy all the people that want one. And even though scalpers are now trying to sell them for a fairly ludicrous price, Nintendo has guaranteed us that you're not going to have to pay more than retail price, so just hold tight. Well, it wasn't too long after the SNES Classic was released that people started saying that it looks like the hardware between the two of them is the same. There's really no reason for Nintendo to reinvent the wheel. Many people will tell you that you can actually hack the NES Classic to play Super Nintendo games, so it certainly has the hardware to do it. So why design an entirely new circuit board and new system to be able to play games that this one already could? So that got me thinking, if we disassemble the Super Nintendo and we do a side-by-side -side comparison with the Nintendo, and the hardware is identical, can I swap the hardware? Can I get the Super Nintendo hardware mounted up in the NES Classic and just for the heck of it see if that works? Well, they both use the same controller port, so if the boards are the same, I don't see a reason why not. So, without further ado, let's dive into it and see if it's possible. Alright, well before we can dissect it, we need to get it out of the box, and that should be easy enough to do. Go ahead and dig in. Now, one of the modifications, one of the changes they made this time around is that it actually comes with two controllers. One of the other store points for the NES Classic only came with one controller with a cord that was about two and a half feet long, and the second controllers were harder to find than the actual consoles were, if you can believe that. So, in here we have the user's manual. Super Mario World, with 96 levels and 9 worlds to explore, you'll be put to the test. Mario will have to run fast, fly high, dive deep, and jump far to save the day. That's pretty neat. They have a uh, poster built onto the back of the instruction sheet. That's nice. Alright, this will be the console itself, but since we're going to dissect it, I think I'll start with the controller. Uh, I think we can leave the power in the HDMI and one of the controllers in here, because we look at one, we've seen them all. That is a nice feeling controller. The weight is decent. The cord's obviously longer. I think it's roughly double the length. And uh, it feels really nice. It feels authentic just like the original one. They never feel exactly the way you remember that, but it's also a uh, it's also <laughs> one that you've worn in over time that you remember. You know, if you've had it for four or five years, it doesn't feel the same as when it was brand new. But yeah, nice and solid. So it certainly feels better than any of the knockoff ones I've used recently. Well, with that, I think we can just go straight to the console, the piece de resistance. Go ahead and pull this out. dun da da dun and there we have it. A very small, very authentic looking Super Nintendo. Uh, weight wise, I feel like they're pretty close. Super Nintendo one feels like it might be a little bit heavier. So you can see the power and the HDMI are in the same location on both systems. Uh, the HDMI again being upside down, so the board's mounted the same way in both of them. Go ahead and clear off some space so we can start digging into this a little bit more. So I've never opened the NES Classic or the SNES Classic, so this is going to be new to me for both. My understanding is that the screws are underneath these little rubber pieces here, the feet. Now differences, actually, before we get into it. Um, we're going to have to assume that the controller connectors are connected to different boards because obviously those aren't in the same position between the two systems, although they do use the same connector, which is the same connector they've been using since the Wii for their accessories. So, okay, now we just see if we can get these out with doing any damage, without doing any damage. There's one.
Those are very small screws. I don't think I have a screwdriver on me that's going to fit that. Okay, we'll have to come back to it. Back in a minute. And only a short 12 hours later, we're back. Yes, I didn't have a proper size screwdriver in the house, so I had to wait till the next day to run out and buy some. So, let's uh, keep taking these pads off, and then we'll get it apart. Okay, there's the pads out. Now we just need a proper size screwdriver, and there should be one in this kit. And there's the main board itself with a little ribbon cable to connect the uh, power and reset and the LED. And then there's the connectors for player one and player two. So before we go any further in disassembling this, let's see if there's a chance that these boards are going to be the same. So go ahead and put that up there. And we'll tear into the SNES Classic. So as we turn into this, my main concern is probably going to be the ribbon cable. The ribbon cable between the two might be different. That's this cable here. And if that won't fit, then that pretty, pretty much kiboshes the entire plan here. Well, I would say that they're darn near identical. Uh, the ribbon cable is longer on this one, but the actual boards themselves... I think this is probably going to work, optimistically speaking. So we'll start off by disconnecting this ribbon cable here. You don't want to be gentle on it. The ribbon cables are usually the most fragile. So just a little, little wiggle, a little pressure. And the top half is now completely detached. Then we'll disconnect the player one and player two cables. Like so. Then it just looks like there are four screws holding it together. And we should be free. As you can see, these boards are pretty smart and there's not a lot of parts on them. A lot of the parts are hidden, or most of the parts are hidden underneath this combination sort of heat, uh, heat sink slash uh, RF shield that is on top. Which we should be able to just twist off. And that, I mean, that's the summary of the entire board. Um, so we'll compare the model numbers on the boards. I'm we'll have to keep track of which is which, so I'll leave that in the Super Nintendo. Uh, we'll start off with the Nintendo, disconnecting the ribbon cable once again. And once again, we should be able to just twist it off. So, the markings are different. Um, this one says NES main, this one says SHVC main 01. But, I would say the overall layout of the boards is identical. Everything is in the exact same position. Uh, we have an extra cap here. Okay, so now it's time to answer the question that was the purpose of the whole video, and I th I'm pretty confident this is the answer is going to be yes. So there's the NES one, there's the SNES one. We'll go ahead and put the heat shield back on. Make sure that we get this right. So there's a thermal pad here that needs to go over top of the processor. This is an ARM processor, it's an R16. This is not that different than from a Raspberry Pi. So the people that have the arguments over, you know, why would you do this instead of the Raspberry Pi? Um, I think it's just because the controllers are so much better quality than a lot of the USB knockoff ones you get. If you buy the USB adapters that do uh, SNES to USB or NES to USB, then that's a valid option. But Okay, so we have the SNES board, and we have the NES board. 
Luckily, they're labeled. That makes this easier. And the question is going to be, will this work with the equipment that's in the NES? Everything seems to line up okay. The ribbon cable looks like it's going to fit. And it closes up just the same. Um, I'm fairly confident this is going to work, but let's go check it out anyways. Here's the moment of truth. The red light is on, and there we have it. Uh, there wasn't really a lot of doubt in my mind that this was going to work. As you can see, the controllers work, which makes sense because it's the same connector, it's the same pinout. Um, yeah, it truly is just the exact same hardware in a different shell. So now we can definitely see Nintendo didn't throw away the baby with the bathwater on this one. The boards are practically identical, except for some changes that are probably related to cost savings. Um, they're obviously completely interchangeable, and it also explains how Nintendo is going to be very easily able to switch to producing the NES Classic again after the SNES Classic run is done. So what makes it tick? Well, the design here is surprisingly simple, and it really isn't that much different than something like a Raspberry Pi. We have an R16 processor here underneath the uh, the heat cover. Uh, attached to that, we've got 128 megs of RAM. Um, then we have a 4 gig uh, flash uh, memory, which is the same type of flash memory you would have in like a USB stick or whatever. Uh, that's where the OS plus the ROMs reside. And 4 gigs is pretty generous. They that's actually enough space to put the entire NES collection onto you know one one system. The chip over here is, uh, as far as I can tell, for power management. And then on the back. We have one chip here that is probably the digital processor, so this takes uh, the signal from the chip and encodes it into something that can go through the HDMI, that gives you your, your audio and your video. Uh, and then there's res various resistors and caps and stuff like that throughout the board. So it's very simple, very Spartan, and uh, yeah, it's, it's a basic design. So I guess uh, we can just put them back where they live. Um, I had briefly considered leaving them swapped, but there isn't really a lot of advantage to doing that other than, you know, it being a talking piece. So I'll put it together and then uh, we'll convene back here again for final thoughts. And there you have it. And there you have it. Two systems that are essentially identical on the inside with a different shell. And again, there wasn't much reason for Nintendo not to do this. The hardware that was designed for the NES Classic is essentially overkill for emulating Nintendo games. In fact, it's overkill for emulating Super Nintendo games, so if and when Nintendo releases the N64 Classic, it's probably again going to be just a modification of this hardware. It'll probably require a little more storage, but I think it's an inevitability that they will, considering how well these consoles have done. The build quality on both of these is excellent. They have a bit of weight to them, but they won't be hard to carry around. The plastic has no give to them, it's just nice and strong. They look visually identical, albeit smaller than their original counterparts. And based on some of the videos I've seen on YouTube, they put up with a lot of abuse before they give up the ghost. There's no moving parts in them, and they don't generate a lot of heat, and the entire system can be cooled passively, which leads me to believe that these are probably going to stick around for the long term. 20 or 30 years from now, people will probably still be able to play these. So I hope you've enjoyed this kind of silly look at the hardware inside them and seeing if we can swap the two. It's probably no surprises that we can, since it's been reported widely that Nintendo had just reused the same hardware between the two. If you like this video, toss me a thumbs up. If you're new here, subscribe, and don't forget to click the bell so you're notified when I put out new content. If you have questions, comments, or if there's something else you want to see more in depth from inside the consoles, let me know in the comments below. I read all the comments and I try to respond to as many of them as I can, so, you know, just let me know what you want to see. Alrighty, well, thanks for watching and sticking around until the end, and until next time, stay creative.